The autumn wind is a league, holding the treasures ye may seek. Have some fun and play along, whether for a day or for a week. Seek advice from a sage, or battle straight up. Square off in a cage, or joust without a cup. It's a FanDuel. Is it your favorite you take, or make the logical play? Will your foe stand before you and quiver and quake, as you will be crowned prince for a day? The autumn wind may be a casual player, fan-dueling just to talk trash. But there will be those that will play that will be able to say, I've got my hands on some cold, hard cash. Hello and welcome to the Box Scores FanDuel Draft Day. I'm Brock here in Los Angeles from our very own Red Zone set. They are the Danettes and the Big Apple DirecTV Fantasy Zone Lounge. And they're ready to draft their teams for week two of Dan Duel Challenge. How are those chairs out there, Fritzy? Are they comfy? Very comfy. Cozy. I think we're all uh, we're all feeling good and ready to rock and roll. Fantastic. All right, we've got week one wrapped up in the weekly Dan Duel Challenge. And in case you didn't know where the guys are uh, ranked, here we go. Uh, McLovin finished uh, in first and second. Fritzy was closer to the middle of the pack at 123rd place, while Seton and Polly brought up the rear, finishing at 469th and 496th place, respectively. Uh, Polly, uh, we know you wouldn't advise Dan to put $500 on you having a better lineup than McLovin, but would you put 50 bucks on McLovin finishing back in the top 10 again this week? No, I wouldn't, just because the odds are against you. You know, McLovin knows his football, but knowing your football and uh, doing this game are two different things. I think you have to have a, a good knowledge to have to be competitive in the FanDuel Challenge, but there is some luck involved. Like yeah. if you look at Sam Bradford, Jordan Matthews, those are my two of my picks. Now, they wouldn't have got me out of the basement, but it would have helped. There was a play where uh, Sam Bradford threw to Jordan Matthews. He's about to score, so I would have got a touchdown for both. I remember the commentator, Trent Dilfer, goes, that's a score. They should review it, and they didn't review it. There's a yeah. lot of people playing fantasy sports that night. They're like, no! review that, review that, because a lot of guys like me who had the quarterback and wide receiver lost the points. But either way, 496, there's four guys who can eat it, and I smoke them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You sound magnificent, and you look magnificent in that chair. Oh, uh, well, we're sure McLovin had one of these players on his roster last week. It's time for Paulie's finger-looking good picking. So, wow, I love that bumping, man. I, uh, I had to do 14 takes of eating those wings for that bumping. Um, these are the guys that it's not a surprise that they did well in week one. You know, you had Julio Jones, 141 yards, two touchdowns. That, with him and he's healthy, he's a sure thing. Gronkowski, three touchdowns. You don't expect three. But with Gronk, I think you do expect mm -hmm. yeah. numbers, especially near the red zone. Yeah. And Tom Brady. It, the tough part about this game is there's a bunch of sure things. You got Brady as your other sure thing in this week. But... You have to have a couple sure things on your team, I believe, to win this. And then you have to mix it in with value picks who overachieve. That's my strategy. And you saw how well it worked week one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Four from the bottom. All right, we'll see if those guys can tear it up again this week. As for uh, the guys who were bust week one, we turn to the man who knows uh, a lot about bust as we bring you Fritzy's Bust of the Week. <laughs> Bus of the week. Uh, first one, I'm going to go with my uh, Broncos against the Ravens. Joe Flacco not getting it done against a tough Denver defense. Only 117 pass yards, no TDs. <coughs> Payton didn't do much better, but uh, Flacco at Denver, 2.68 fan points. Uh, cost you $8,100 if you played him, and he uh, did not show up uh, in mile high. Adrian Peterson, we were all excited about his return. He wasn't ready just yet. Maybe week two will be different at the Niners on Monday night. 31 rushing yards, three receptions for 21 yards, no TDs. 6.7 is what he got you. $9,000 was the bill if you started Adrian Peterson. Calvin Johnson is my third bust at the Chargers. Two catches for under 40 yards, no TDs. Under, four, under five fan points. That one cost you $8,100 to start Calvin Johnson not doing it. Brock, let, let me ask you something. Any concern with the FanDuel execs with giving Fritzy a segment called uh, Busts of the Week? Mm. Something mm -hmm. a little off color, something mm -hmm. not family friendly. Mm -hmm. Fritzy, I'm proud of you. You were able to keep I it was, together. I was able to uh, hang on and stay yeah. calm. And I was lo I was looking at uh, what was going on there in, uh, at the Milford Studios. I got excited, but uh, that's why I'm kind of blocking things with my, uh, with my notes here. So we're okay. <clears throat> 
Well, if there were any concerns, they've been doubled by now. All right. Well, no one figured those picks would fall flat first in the, uh, in the first week of the season, season, and no one saw these picks blowing up the way they did. Unless, of course, you picked them. It's time for Seton's Breakthrough Rockstar. <laughs> Rockstar. <laughs> uh, that's heavy metal face right there. Um, you know what? I think that, well, this first guy, I think everyone expected to have a good week, but it turned out he had a really great week. Tyler Eifert, the Bengals. Um, he, two touchdowns, got you 27 points. It looks like he's pretty much the sure thing this year. Uh, another guy, though, that I don't really know anything about is Carlos Hyde of the 49ers. Wow. Uh, and he had a monster day. Uh, 160, uh, 168 yards, two touchdowns, got you a league high 31 points. That dude, I don't know much about him, but he's on my radar for sure. All right, breakout performances indeed for those superstars. Uh, there was one quarterback who also performed better than expected on the gridiron. We turn to McLovin to break it all down. Here's McLovin's system breaking QB. Now, <laughs> normally it takes rookies a long time to adjust, especially ones from spread offenses. Not Marcus Mariota. Oh, man, four TDs, <laughs> Fritzy. Gotta show me Marcus. some. Uh, Is he going to do that again? Like, show me some. Thing. Show me some. Here's the thing. Tampa Bay in week one, you know, not a good defense. Cleveland looked really vulnerable mm. against the Jets last week, and I think it's a it's a good follow-up. I, I that's got to be an aberration. I got to tell you, I spent a lot of time looking at the film. Of Were you Mariota. crunching numbers? No, I was, I was looking at the all-22. I was studying how he reacted to the defenses. <laughs> I, I like Mariota this week. I think he's a smart player. <laughs> All right, uh, I wouldn't doubt any of this stuff. All right, solid breakdown there from the guys. I wonder if any of them went with these guys in uh, week two. We'll find out in a bit. But first, if I'm doing a fantasy truck draft, I'm taking the Ram 1500 Eco Diesel number one. This boy can climb a hill, haul a trailer, and crush any fantasy opponent. Get more facts at ramtrucks.com. Guts, glory, Ram. Welcome back to Box Wars FanDuel Draft Day. We've looked back at the week that was, now let's get ready for the week ahead. It's time to go drafting, but first, the Danettes have been issued a challenge for this week. McLovin, tell us what it is. Okay, you have to pick a quarterback with an even numbered jersey. So that knocks out a lot of uh, the favorites around the room. I like it, I like yeah. it. Who yeah. had to spend wanted... minutes Googling jersey numbers of yeah. quarterbacks they're thinking about? I definitely had to check. Oh my sure. gosh, totally. Like going to the image, yeah. And yeah. Drew Brees, Seaton. Seaton immediately said, no! Because they were like, oh, maybe we'll go odd numbers. I was like, sweet, because Drew Brees is going to have a monster week. Uh, we were even. <laughs> Dang! Very good. All right, the tables have been set. So we're going to start with the two guys at the very bottom of the standings uh, in the Danduel League. It is uh, Polly. Uh, Polly, how about this? Uh, you have only one word, a place to go, and that's up. Who are you taking? You know, Brock, I'm going to bring this up. I've been sitting on this. Uh, mm. At first, I was a little salty because McLovin had two teams, but that's perfectly within the rules. What I was salty is really. we have a guy who's kind of our guru, our, our conduit at Fanduel, Nick. Now, Nick's a nice guy. You know, <laughs> takes good care of us, shows us the ropes. First week, I come in last place. I mean, I'm down. He goes, hey, buddy, can go nowhere but up, right? <laughs> <laughs> Group emails just calling me out. I'm like, give me a little help yeah, here. Nick. I want some morale, Nick. Nice yeah, I think job. he's the guy who gets the show. Yeah, well, Nick he, may fit he in gets here. He's a Paul Pabst role. Mean-spirited. You should be hired by our show. All right, here's my team for week two. I'm going to ride Marcus Mariota in week two because I think it's going to take time for people to yeah. figure him out. I think he's going to have a great first four games, and then he'll level out. Lamar Miller, I like him still with uh, with Miami running back. He'll get more carries. Bishop Sankey, running back <coughs> for the Titans as well. Caught some balls, ran the ball. Mm. Again, I think they're going to have a little run and then cool off. Uh, Matthews, the wide receiver for the Eagles, he gets targeted a lot. Good call. Yeah, I, 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 just, I think I'm going to ride him out a little bit as well. Julio Jones is my sure thing pick where I spent some money because I, I just can't imagine him not catching seven balls in a touchdown. Jason Witten I went with. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Jarvis Landry, another wide receiver I like. A lot of <clears> targets. Uh, targets to me is, is a big deal. That's what I, I kind of look for. Uh, Jason Witten, again, uh, the Cowboys, with Des Bryant down, you would assume that Witten's going to get the ball more, not less. Graham Gano, like the name. That's a kicker. <laughs> Just like the name. It's kind of, kind of a good kicker name. Graham Gano. Gano, it's going to go in. That's like a Bermanism. <laughs> and then I went with the Ravens defense. Again, that's, uh, to me, a value pick. They weren't that expensive. 
Defenses don't fluctuate too much financially, so I took the best for what I could afford. All right, Paulie, you pretty much copied all of uh, th uh, McLovin's three receivers from last week. If he finishes in the top again, are you going to continue this trend to look on his sheet? <clears throat> Yeah, I based my academic career off cheating over the paper of the guy next to me, especially the nerdy guy with glasses. Why stop now? <laughs> Solid call. All right. To our uh, academic master, Seton, uh, who's, uh, who's in your lineup? Uh, well, you know, first off, I have to uh, say thank you to Paul uh, for last week <laughs> because we spent all of this time talking about how terrible his performance was. Right. Most people didn't notice that I finished 469th which was just brutal. It was absolutely awful. But you now, didn't finish last. I didn't finish last. And so, Paulie, I owe you a big thank you. Yeah. And we had a lot of the same players. Uh, so I think that that's why we were grouped similarly. <laughs> it turns out, well, we don't have a lot of similar <laughs> players, but we're, we're almost right there. Um, I've got a lot invested in uh, Seattle at Green Bay. Uh, Aaron Rodgers is my quarterback. He's pretty much a sure thing. I took Marshawn Lynch as my as one of my running backs uh, because Matt Forte just had a day yeah. with uh, against the uh, Packers. So I think he, you know, Marshawn should be a short thing. Danny Woodhead, I went with. He's usually good for a touchdown or two. All right, we'll see if that pays off. Julio Jones is a short thing. Percy Harvin at wide receiver could have a big day mm -hmm. against the Patriots. Uh, I went with James Jones, probably because he had a big week last week, so mm -hmm. why not do it again? That's a great call. Uh, Jason Witten also seems to be a sure thing. I took Robbie Gould at kicker because uh, we one, hung out with him. Uh, he's been on the box score, huh. and we've hung out with him. And I don't really have any faith in Jay Cutler getting into the end zone, but he'll get within scoring distance, yep. so I like that. And I took the Rams defense going against Washington. That could be a, a yeah. good time. Uh, Cousins will give you one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he'll give you one. Well, Seton, a glaring omission. You were uh, tasked with getting the quarterback with an even number. Why did you not go with the uh, hashtag Tommy? Uh, because the Bills. Rex Ryan. Uh, yeah, Rex Ryan knows mm. how to play the Patriots and pretty much has Tom Brady's number, so I don't really like the Bills' uh, defense at all against Tom Brady. Excellent analysis. I'm writing that one down. All right, uh, we got the front rows uh, lineups all set. If you want to play one-week fantasy football against Dan and the Danettes, just go to FanDuel.com slash Patrick and enter the promo code Patrick for a 100% deposit match up to $200 on new accounts. $5 and winners get instant cash as soon as the contest ends. That's FanDuel, the leader in one-day fantasy sports. Stick around. We will see who is on Fritzy's and McLovin's rosters after this. We're back here on the Box Scores uh, FanDuel Draft Day. The front row's lineups are all set. Now we look to the top two Danettes from last week, the back row tandem of Fritzy and McLovin. Uh, Fritzy, you had some decent success in week one. Do you feel like you have a pretty good handle on this fantasy thing? I think I do. It's, I, I, 123rd out of 500, I thought it was, it was respectable, but not enough to do any uh, bragging like this guy with first place and second place. But I, I feel pretty good about this uh, lineup. Somehow I ended up with... Uh, three Colts and uh, two Lions. I'm surprised was... you didn't come in 250th place. Oh, right down the middle, right, just yeah. like my, uh, <laughs> I am I am very uh, wishy-washy like that and right on the fence. Uh, the, kind the, of. I'll probably end up with uh, with 250 this time around. But uh, uh, as far as uh, this week rolls, uh, I like Andrew Luck as my uh, quarterback Monday night against the Jets. I'm feeling, uh, I'm feeling good about Luck. I think he's got to bounce back from uh, from a tough uh, week one against Buffalo. Mm -hmm. uh, went with another uh, Colt for Monday night, uh, Frank Gore. I think uh, even though the Jets have a good defense, I'm uh, feeling good about Frank Gore. I don't know exactly why, but I think uh, he's going to uh, get something going at the Meadowlands. Uh, Deion Lewis, after his uh, interesting performance mm. week one against the Steelers on Monday night, uh, I went Deion Lewis for uh, New England at Buffalo, even though the Bills have a strong defense. That was uh, one of the risks I took. Uh, Odell Beckham Jr., Giants-Falcons. I'm hoping he's going to do uh, something big uh, in one of the early games on Sunday. Calvin Johnson, Lions-Vikings at Minnesota. I like uh, Calvin oh, Johnson Calvin. to uh, do something special this week. Went with another Johnson, Andre Johnson, a third Colt. Monday night's going to be big for me. I don't know how many points I'm going to have going into Monday night, but Luck, Gore, and Andre Johnson, three Colts in the lineup. Greg Olson, hopefully he'll have a lot better success than Seton experienced with him when the Panthers are at the Texans, when the Panthers host the Texans. Uh, then I got Detroit, Minnesota, Matt Prater as a, a second lion to go with Calvin Johnson. Hopefully he'll put up some points at Minnesota. And J.J. Watt and the Texans at Carolina. 
Hopefully Houston Texans defense will uh, put up some points, and uh, that's what we're looking for uh, in week two. All right, you went with Gore. Uh, he didn't do so well last week. You didn't go with Julio Jones. You're the one guy that didn't do that. Uh, what is your reasoning behind that? Hmm. Uh, I just um, I did I took uh, something out of McLovin's playbook called Against the Grain and going with the less obvious ones instead of the Aaron Rodgers and the Julio Jones of the world. The uh, Calvin Johnsons are much more sneaky. <laughs> yeah, the unknowns like Calvin and Andre Johnson. Deion Lewis, yeah, I think, is going to be the big difference uh, yeah, for me. Deion Lewis and Greg Olson are going to be the, uh, the big factors that I'm keeping All right. the X factors for week two for my life. On to the master of Against the Grain and the fantasy football guru himself. McLovin, which players are going to guide you back to first place this week? Let me just start by saying that I love Paulie's team. I really like Seton's team. I can't stand Todd's team, <laughs> which means that somehow, yeah, because I couldn't say in your team last right. week, and you right. did really well. You're the you're the fantasy ninja. You you True sort of story. stealth around. Mm -hmm. So True there's story. something like I'm like Dion Lewis. You really think he's going to do it again? Two touchdowns, dude. I would watch out for <laughs> Dion Lewis this week. I love everybody's team except my own. I, if I could redo this right now, I would, but I know you already built the graphic. Quarterback, <laughs> Matt <laughs> Ryan. First of all, when we said even number quarterbacks, everyone said Matt Ryan. I'm like, well, it's obvious you got to go Matt Ryan. Running back, I'm going to ride Jeremy Hill. Uh, running back, Carlos Hyde. Classic, he had a great week, so I hope he has another yeah. week. But I'm like, oh, my God, is he going to have another week? Uh, Julio, like everybody else. Kendall Wright is a primary target for Mariota. Uh, Terrence Williams, uh, Cowboys receiver, tears up the Eagles. That's a good one. Um, I kind of wish I had Jordan Matthews like Paulie. Uh, Tyler Eifert, I'm going to ride him till he lets me down, which wow. will probably be this week. Kicker, Josh Brown had a big week. I think he's on the Giants. Josh Brown's been on like every team. <laughs> the league. The and there's like Chris Brown, There's no more Josh generic Brown. name. I know. I'm Josh like, Scobie. I like the whole list of kickers. I started, I was looking at kickers. I was like, all of a sudden, you know, I only know about 50% of the kickers in the NFL. Like, are these real names? It's like, it's like Sean Succotash is like the kicker for the, <laughs> for the, for like the Chiefs. Ted Leg. <laughs> so Sean bizarre. And then here's my huge risk. I'm out of money and I get the defense. But I need Carlos Hyde and Jeremy Hill at running back. Like, I'm like jonesing for those two guys. Washington Redskins. Ah! Mm, holy Redskins smokes. Defense. At home against St. Louis, and the Redskins beat the crap out of the Dolphins last week. <laughs> so, I thought that was a good value. It was a 4,100 for defense. But I don't feel good about this. I really don't feel good. All right, then, McLovin, what would be if the you one change you would make to your one? roster? No, I wouldn't bet on that. <laughs> what change would you make? Um... <laughs> I, I lo well, the Jeremy Hill, Marshawn Lynch debate kept me up literally all Tuesday night. I didn't sleep at that. Because I think Marshawn's going to go off against Green Bay. I would probably take, who are your receivers, Paulie? Uh, Landry Jordan Matthews. Jones. Jordan Matthews over Kendall Wright. I got a side bet. Who wants a side bet? Does I'll side bet. Uh, does McLovin finish in the top 50 out of 500 Ooh. or 50 or worse? I'll bet you $100 on the low 50. Yeah, I think he's going yeah, out the odds top Yeah, the odds are 50. still with you that he's under 50. Yeah. So. Anybody think he's going to be in the top 50? After going first and second like that, I think he's he's due for a slide week two. He's going to go out of the top. No yeah. comment. Yeah, I'm Googling who the hell Matt Ryan is right now. Okay. <laughs> Don't go away. There's still one lineup left to reveal. <laughs> That's right. The boss himself has actually told us who he's going with this week. But first, we're going to take a break and remind you that the Ram Heavy Duty, with its best-in-class towing torque and horsepower, doesn't need one. Guts. Glory. Ram. We are closing up shop here on the box score FanDuel Draft Day. If you haven't heard you, that's right, you can also take on Dan and the Danettes in weekly fantasy football. Just go to fanduel.com slash Patrick and enter the promo code Patrick for a 100% deposit match up to $200 on new accounts. $5 to enter and winners get instant cash as soon as the contest ends. Don't need to wait all week or all season. All right, uh, now last week it seemed like no one could find out who Dan was picking. Polly, did anyone get to the bottom of this controversy? You know what? I, as producer of the show, you think I've had pretty good access to our host. Mm, and I asked Dan his picks. And, and either he didn't know who he picked after the games or he's playing with us. I, Dan is going to find a way to win this. I don't know how. I saw him out drinking with uh, Nick, the FanDuel guy, the other day. So I assume he's got to enter you know, a, a back door to, to win the whole thing. But uh, I would like to know Dan's lineup on the record. I think we all would. Yes, okay. I think we deserve that. Very nice. Well, we uh, actually got our hands on Dan's lineup for this week, and we bring it to you now in the form of Boss's Thoughts. I got my roster here. 
Uh, Matt, Matty Ice, Matt Forte, who I love. Carlos Hyde had the big, uh, big game. I'm waiting for DeAndre Hopkins now with uh, Ryan Mallett, the quarterback. Uh, James Jones, I'll roll the dice that maybe he'll do something there against uh, Seattle. Tyler Eifert, the secret's no longer a secret. Uh, Matt Bryant of the Falcons and uh, the Miami Dolphins. I feel like they're going to get after Blake Bortles. So that's it. I mean, it's it's magical. Um, it's all up here. It's just by feel. I just want to say one thing. I have Matt Ryan. I have Carlos Hyde. And I have Tyler Eifert. But I didn't copy you. It's just great no, minds no, think I, alike. It's great yeah, minds think either. alike in this case. When do I have to and I'm put gonna... in my roster, make it official? I think you already did. Oh, I did? Well, but I did think Forte, but I'm going to go switch my lineup right now. See you later. Dude, Forte. We never take Forte seriously, and then he just churns up the points. <laughs> God. Do you think that Dan cheated off your lineup? No. Somehow? Why not? Nah, he came nah. in first and second place out of 500. Can I switch to Forte right now? I think already built I think the graphics too in. late. It's already on the record, dude. It's stamped. The Boom. graphics Official. have been built. Now, what if any of us tries to pull back in shenanigans? And who would do such a thing? Besides you? Dan. Dan oh, would just... pay me to do it for yeah. him. Right. That's what we talked about. What kind of shenanigans can you do at this point? It's all locked in. We, have, we, have, we know who your picks are. You can't even. You can't even go to Nick and have him go into the Dude, computer I'm and so change the lineup for the last minute. I will go and poison Lamar Miller's oatmeal before the you know, game just to keep that strong. It's funny that you say that because I haven't really been sleeping great the last couple of days. Yeah. I bet it. Yeah. Mm. It must be like, oh, fantasy football stress. It's FanDuel oh. stress. It's a side effect. You should see. I'm like running an all 22 in my mind right now. About, the, about running this certain play, Marshawn Lynch near the goal line. All right, LeBrock, let's get your pick. Who do you think's going to win this week? All right, uh, I'm going to go with Seton. Let's see. He went with Aaron Rodgers, Julio Jones, and oh, Marshawn Lynch. You, uh, when in doubt, you go with three heavy hitters. Am I right? Well, good luck to you, Seton. Good luck, my friend, I say. All right, uh, Fritzy, you, who's sir. on the Dan Patrick Show tomorrow? Tony Dungy will join us off the uh, big Bronco Chief AFC West battle, and he'll also help us preview uh, what's cooking uh, the rest of week two. And Doug Flutie, NBC uh, Notre Dame lead analyst, uh, will uh, stop by as well. All right, thanks for watching the uh, Box Score FanDuel Draft Show. You can watch the Danettes make their selections every Thursday right here on the Audience Channel, 239 on DirecTV or uh, via the podcast. Available on iTunes or at podcast1.com. Right at, oh, I. I don't know a lot about sports, but I can drink a lot of beer. My motto is simple, C's get degrees. You need a long and appropriate hug? I'm your man. I think I'm smarter than you, because I probably am. Hey, thanks for watching the box score. Holy cow!